Hello grade 7 students, students of every age, parents, teachers, anyone willing to watch this video. My name is Mr. Benjamin. My teaching partner, Ms. Terrio, unfortunately is not with me right now. I'm going to try to get her into the next video though. We're going to be looking at measurements. So this is going to be an introduction video. We're going to take a look at a little bit of perimeter as well. Before we go any further, let me tell you the plan. Perimeter is going to take about two to three days. When we're done with perimeter, we're going to be looking at area, and that's going to take another two to three days. Perimeter and area are very similar, so we can kind of link them together, but after that, we're going to look at volume, and volume is going to take a bit longer. It'll be about a week. So how is this going to work? This is probably the first time a lot of you are going to be doing this. This concept is known as a flipped classroom. So we can kind of see Bart down here. He's writing on the chalkboard. I will not flip the classroom upside down. Well, we're actually going to try to do that. And the way this works is the lesson, which we usually have in school during class time, is actually going to be done at home. And what you're going to do is you're going to watch videos just like this one, and you're going to take your own time with the video if you need to watch it again multiple times, as many times as you need, and you're going to watch it at home. The homework, which is usually done at home, hence the word homework, is actually going to be done in class. So the day after you watch this video, you're going to come into class, and together we're going to do our work. And at that point, we're going to make sure everyone understands what's going on. So measurement. Measurement is assigning a value to an object so it can be compared to another. The important point there is the fact that we are assigning a value. We can compare things in life every day. We can say something is bigger, smaller, larger, wider, shorter, taller, whatever you want to say. But until you actually put a value to that object, you can't really be sure. And we always want to be sure about things. So some things that we can measure, we almost always measure our height. We'll do it every year that we go to the doctor. We'll do it periodically just to see how much taller or shorter we've gotten. And generally, we measure height in feet. But we're probably not going to be measuring anything in this class in feet. We're probably going to be using centimeters or meters. So for example, myself, I'm around 165 centimeters. Now, we would commonly say that as 5 foot 6, but we're going to stick with centimeters for now. Other things we can measure, we measure tracks and distances. So if someone is running track and field, or maybe during the Olympics or any sporting events, we'll measure tracks. And these will be things like 100 meter dash, 200 meter, or something even longer like 800 meter. We also like to measure our driving distances. So my commute, meaning the distance from my house to our school, Our Lady of the Lake, is about 55 kilometers, which is pretty far. Now we wouldn't measure our height in kilometers, and we wouldn't measure my or our driving distances in centimeters. So we always want to use the right measurement and the right units for each object and distance. In class, most of the time, we're going to be using centimeters or meters. So perimeter is the total distance around an object. Most of the time, we're going to be measuring polygons. Polygons are closed figures that are made with straight lines. Examples of polygons, we've got squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids. And we're going to look at all of these things at one point or another. So when we want to measure regular objects, like this rectangle up here or this square down below, we generally use a formula. And when we want to talk about perimeter, we always use a P to signify perimeter. So perimeter is equal to the rectangle's length I almost spelled that wrong. You know what, I'm just going to write that again. length plus width and all of this is multiplied by 2. Another way we can write it out is length plus length plus width plus width. So if we look at our rectangle over here, these two sides are equal and that's the width and these two sides are equal and those are the length. 
So if we get ourselves a ruler and we measure these, the length is about 5 centimeters. And the width looks like it's about 3 centimeters. So if we want to fill in these values in our formula, we're going to write perimeter again equals 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3. So 5 centimeters for one length, 5 centimeters for another length, 3 centimeters for one width, and 3 centimeters for another width. When we add this all up, we're going to end up with 16 centimeters. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 16 centimeters around. Now we're going to get rid of all this, and we're going to look at our square underneath. So squares are unique in the sense that they have four equal sides. And I'm going to show you that they're all equal by putting a line around each side. If we measure one of these sides, we see it's about, I'd say around two and a half centimeters. So we're again going to write perimeter. Perimeter is equal to length plus length plus width plus width. Now all of these values for the square are going to be the same. So all we're going to have to do is write 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5. When we add that all up, we're going to get 10 centimeters. So the perimeter of our square is equal to 10 centimeters. So not all objects are going to have similar sized sides. Sometimes they're going to be different. For example, this pentagon right here, pentagon meaning five, so pentagon, five sides. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to measure each side and find out how long it is. Now I've already done this, so I know that these two sides up top, these are going to be the same length, these two sides are the same length and this last side down here is a different length. So we don't really have a length and a width in a pentagon, so we're just going to label the sides. We're going to call this side 1, side 2, side 3, side 4, and side 5. So if we measure side 1, side 1 is about 4 centimeters, so first we're going to write our equation. Perimeter equals side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 plus side 4, and we can't fit side 5, we're going to put it down here, plus side 5, which equals, like I said, side 1 is about 4 centimeters, side 2 is also 4 centimeters, side 3 is about 3 centimeters, Side 4 is a bit longer, it's about 5 centimeters. And side 5 is the same as side 3, so that's going to be 3 centimeters as well. When we add all this up, we're going to end up with 8, 11, 16, 18. 18 centimeters around. I was going to add that up once more to make sure I've done that correctly. 4 plus 4 gives us 8, 8 plus 3 gives us 11. Five, oops, yeah, I did that wrong. I'm going to have to correct myself. 4 plus 4 is 8, 11, 16, 19. 19 centimeters. My mistake. So the perimeter of this pentagon is actually 19 centimeters. Now we're going to get rid of all this, and we're going to take a look at the perimeter of the shape underneath. And the shape underneath has six sides. That's known as a hexagon. Okay, now we're going to assume that all six of these sides are the same length. So perimeter equals side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 plus side 4 
plus side 5, and again we can't fit the last one, so we're going to put it on the bottom side, 6. The other way we can say that is perimeter equals 6 times the distance of one side, because all six sides are equal. Now if we measure one of these sides, we can see that it's approximately two centimeters, and all of them are around that size. So we can either write perimeter is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, or we can write it is equal to 2 times 6. And either way, we're going to end up with 12 centimeters. <laughs> so while you're at home now, you should try all of these out. So this first shape right here on the left, this one is a square. And each side is going to be equal. Each side will equal 5 centimeters. So you're going to add those up, and you're going to find out how big that is, or how big the perimeter is. This next shape over here is a rectangle. And the two short sides, which we called the width, those are each one meter. And the two long sides, which we called the length, those are each 12 meters. So you're going to have to add all those up. Remember, there's four sides, so you should have four numbers. Down here, we've got a bit of a diamond shape or a square on the rounded side. These are all different measurements. So we're going to say this one side is two centimeters, then three centimeters, then four. 2, 3, 2, 4. So you're going to add those up as well. And at the bottom here, we've got a triangle. Now again, all these sides are equal. And each side is 3 meters. So you can add those up and find out how long the perimeter is of that as well. Finally, we've got a little challenge. Now, this object kind of looks like a logo from a certain brand. People might have clothing or shoes by it. It is pretty big. It's got 14 sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 sides. So what you're going to want to do is get yourself a ruler, measure each side, write it out, and find out the perimeter of it. Things to keep in mind. Always count the number of sides so you know how many sides you're going to be adding up. A square, a rectangle, they're usually going to have four a pentagon, hexagon, five or six, and as you go to different objects, they're going to have a different number of sides. Measure from zero. Always start your measurements from zero. That way you're going to get a more accurate measurements. Then you're going to want to add all the sides together, and remember to write the units, because you can say a square has a perimeter of six, but I don't know what you're talking about. It could be six meters, six centimeters, six cows, six houses, six teachers, whatever it is. But you have to have the units. And that is the end of our first lesson, so I want to say thank you for watching. And for my students, I will see you all in school tomorrow.